Okay, I'm going to continue with EKG. We're going to look at mostly at leads and a little bit of, at tracing. And this is following along mostly with Chapter 2 of Dale Dubbin's Rapid Interpretation of, of EKGs. EKG paper is basically a bunch of grid paper, and they're broken up. As you can see, we have um, these boxes, these large boxes, and they have smaller boxes inside. The smaller boxes inside are one millimeter by one millimeter squares. And essentially, the length of this, the, the x-axis, is telling us the time period, and the y-axis is telling us voltage. So each small box, is, uh, there's, within each larger box, there's five small boxes inside. Each small box is 40 milliseconds, and so if you take 40 times 5, you get 200 milliseconds for each large box. Now, it's important to remember that the deflection is the direction of a tracing and the amplitude is the magnitude of the of the voltage. You'll understand what this means as we go on. So in the EKG what you'll typically see is there will be this um, this reference pulse and it's usually going to be uh, 10 millimeters per 1 millivolt. And so you get a 1 millivolt reference pulse that's made and it, so you can be able to see exactly what 1 millivolt is and then you'll see the lines and everything else compared to that. Now you'll know that each, each square, each tiny square in here is 1 millimeter, so there's 5 millimeters and there's 10 millimeters. And so you, between here and here is going to be 10 little squares. Now just a little bit of nomenclature, upward deflections are called positive deflections and downwards are called negative deflections. And this is uh, just referring to how the voltage is traveling with respect to the positive electrode. So as current, as, we, as I've gotten drawn here, as current is going towards the positive electrode, you get an upward deflection. As it's going away from the positive electrode, you get a downward deflection. And so you can get current going towards it, making upward, and then traveling further away from it, making a downward deflection. And when I say current here, I'm talking about the, the intracellular positive charge. So as I looked at in the introduction video that I just made, the positive charge moves into the cell, and that causes the depolarization. So essentially, we're just monitoring depolarization as it moves toward or away from a positive electrode. And that's a little bit of a simplification because as I showed you in the last video, you can also monitor repolarization with respect to a positive electrode as well. And I have a summary of all of that as well. If we think of depolarization as the movement of positive charge and repolarization as the movement of negative charge, then you can uh, find an, an answer on how it's going to look on a deflection right here. Okay, we're, I'll explain these in the order that they were uh, originally done in history. So Eindhoven, he originally put a negative electrode on the right arm, a positive on the left arm, and then he used the left foot as a ground. And honestly, the left foot is used as a ground in all of these, but we think of it as being a positive charge for this, uh, what's called the second lead. And so we can monitor electrical movement in this vector. That's called lead one. And then lead two would be from the right arm to the left foot. And that's, we're just monitoring electrical, uh, the electrical vector of the heart from this angle and then we can also monitor the electrical vector of the heart from this angle and so this triangle that we see is called Eindhoven's triangle because it's actually really important in understanding the EKG. So again with Eindhoven's triangle what we want to do is understand what it means with the electrical activity of the heart so I'm going to take each of these lines and push them inward toward the heart and we're going to see what that looks like. And what we end up with are these intersecting lines. And so you can see these intersecting lines are describing, we're looking, basically we're looking toward the heart in this direction. We're watching electrical uh, depolarization come toward us. And so you can look at it from this direction and from this direction as well. And what you'll notice is that here we're looking at the heart from the side and here we're looking at it from below. And so I've just demonstrated that for you right here, looking at the heart from the side and looking at the heart from below. And these are actually really easy to remember because we just labeled them uh, moving clockwise. So this is lead 1, lead 2, lead 3. A little while later in history, somebody else realized, hey, I, I can actually combine negative leads and form this, like, this, um, we'll call it 
a virtual negative endpoint right at the heart, so right at the heart, and then using the leg as the positive lead. And I get this AVF. A stands for augmented, V for voltage, and then the F stands for foot. So I have this augmented voltage lead, and it's looking straight. It, it, the vector is straight down, so I'm looking straight up at the heart. And then we also have the AVR, AVL leads. So AVR meaning that we use the right hand as the positive vector, and then we can combine these two as a negative and put them right at the heart, and we can monitor the heart from this angle. We can monitor the heart from this angle for the AVL. Now these are called unipolar limb leads because there is no true negative. We just have a tr basically a true positive, and we're using the heart basically as our negative, and it's, it's because we're combining these two leads together. If you've had physics, then just think of it as vector sums. And so here's another look at it one more time, and just to draw in, if I were to basically take all of these, if I were to take this lead and connect it in with this lead and connect it in with this lead, I can see that I have three more different directions that I'm looking at the heart from. And so here's that, essentially. This would be the AVF. Let me write that in here. This would be AVF. This would be AVL. And this would be AVR. This one's easier to remember counterclockwise because we're rolling on the floor laughing. And whenever I take my augmented limb leads and I look at them with my bipolar limb leads, I can get essentially six different directions of view. And so here's all of that combined. And what I did for you is I went in here and I put the initial uh, electrical vector of the heart with the total QRS vector of the, of the heart as well. And so we can take a look at each lead and what that's going to look like and how that will be different. Now it's important to remember that I drew these arrows in so they're not really exactly perfect. If this arrow was in it would probably start right here and go just a little bit upward but not much. And so you would take the vector sum of that which would be basically that much and that's how much that upward amount would be how much you would get an upward spike on the AVL. And then if you look at the total sum of the, of the vector from here to here well, I'll just have to admit that I just drew these in really poorly. Um, hopefully you'll get a better view on lead 1 and lead 2. Um, but essentially, uh, anything that's 90 degrees away from the lead should make a, f a flat line. And anything that's either 180 degrees or 0 degrees away from the vector should cause the largest either upward or downward spikes. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit easier to see for limb one, and what you get is just this really short initial uh, going away from, and that's causing the, um, the, the downward, so you've got this slight Q uh, on the QRS, so you've got the slight Q wave, and then you have a more pronounced um, vector going straight towards one, and so you get this very high uh, R wave. And then here in lead 2, it's most prominent. So you, again, so lead 2, you would say from this area to this area is my initial downward spike. And, but then from this to this is my upward spike, so much larger. And I could keep going through these for you on each one of them, but it would be easier for you to get a more, a slightly more accurate drawing of the vectors of how each of the depolarization phases go and look at them and just compare them to each of the limb leads that I have here. These limb leads I got from ecg.utah.edu. And I was able to find, I just googled normal ECG tracing and it was the second image on the images screen. So here's lead three and here's AVR. You'll notice the AVR is primarily downward and that's because the the QRS complex is moving away from it. Using vector addition we can actually derive a law uh, that describes the relationship that, the, that each of these leads have with each other and this this first one is called Eindhoven's law so if we did vector addition if we took lead one and added in lead 3, we get this net vector is basically lead 2. So um, lead 2 is equal to lead 3 plus lead 1. That's called Eindhoven's Law. Then let me go ahead and draw in. So here's AVF, and we've got AVL, and we've got AVR. And so you can see that if I took the point of this and placed it here, right, I'd be here. And then if I added the, this to here, 
I would come back to here, and so I would be right back where I was started. And so the law here is AVF plus AVR plus AVL equals zero, and all it is is vector addition. And so here's a good look at that. So we said that lead one plus lead three would equal lead two. And if I look here, like the magnitude from here to here plus the magnitude from here to here is going to equal the magnitude from here to here. And that's true. So I've counted these boxes. There's about eight millimeters between uh, the bottom and the top. And there's about four millimeters between the bottom and the top here. And there's about 13. So eight plus uh, four that would be 12. Well, so there's about 12 uh, millimeters between the bottom and the top there. And then AVR plus AVL plus AVF equals zero. And again, we have, um, let's just zoom in and look together. So we have from here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and, uh, eight and a half. We'll say negative eight and a half. So negative 8.5. Then we zoom in down here and we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a little over negative 5. So right here, negative 5 plus some. Then we zoom in up here and we can count. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And so if we have a, a positive 13, so 13. Uh, minus 5 minus 8 is equal to 0. Now, in actuality, with an EKG, leads 1 and 2 are the only ones measured on an, uh, an actual EKG, and the rest of them are calculated. They're calculated using these equations. They're probably not important to know, but they're here for you. So uh, lead 3 is equal to 2 minus 1, of course, and then these others are just basically using trigonometry uh, to calculate. Now this calculation is true only for the limb leads. We also have precordial leads and they're all measured directly. Now my source on this, I'm telling you, Eric Strong's medical lectures on YouTube. I love them. They're the best free lectures you can get. Now with the limb leads, we're only looking at the heart in two dimensions. We also want to look at a sort of outward in the third dimension, and that's what the precordial leads are, and that they're sometimes called chest leads. And you can see that they're looking out in, in this other third dimension. So I like to think of the limb leads as allowing me to look at the heart, like I'm looking straight at a person, I'm looking at their heart sort of in a frontwards cross-section, and the precordial leads, I'm looking from above or from below, and I'm slicing the heart in sections in that way. And so here we are looking at the heart from above, we've got this sectional superior view of the heart. You remember that the, the left ventricle is always thicker than the right ventricle. And you remember that we have a, this initial uh, depolarization in this direction, uh, but we have the latter depolarization. So it goes, the, the uh, Purkinje fibers, the, the left bundle branch, uh, begins the depolarization right here, and it's moving across the septum. But as it's moving across the septum, it's also moving around the front and back of the septum as well. And so we get this initial depolarization in this vector with the final, uh, so this would be the Q, and then the final R wave uh, moving in this vector. And so when I superimpose my, my precordial leads uh, numbered V1 through V6 on top of this, you can see that I'll be able to get a different view of the heart from, uh, from this angle as well. Now again, the um, the total uh, thickness of the left ventricle is much thicker than the right ventricle, and that's why the net vector, even though the, the depolarization is traveling around this way as well, it's such uh, thinner muscles that we get a net vector moving in this direction. And it's basically, I'm adding up vectors that are going this way, little tiny vectors with big vectors that are going this way, and it ends up canceling these guys out. And you'll notice I did a little bit j better job of placing these um, arrows than I did in the last one. And so I get this little tiny vector initially going this way, and then so it's going towards this positive electrode, and then eventually it's going away from this positive electrode, and so it's going sharply downward. And so this is mainly downward, and you can see that it's mainly downward in V1 and V2. Then it starts to become what's called equiphasic, equiphasic. And some people call this isoelectric. That's actually an incorrect term. It's not iso isoelectric implies a flat line. So equiphasic means that it's equally up and down. 
and then by the time you get to lead 4 it just continues getting taller and taller up to lead 6. Electrode placement is uh, really important so you know where the uh, why, where the limb leads go. They go on the arms and legs and of course there's some variation where you can do that as well and of, um, so there's limb leads right here placement. Then you also have these precordial leads and so I'd like to point out where these go. So if we count the ribs down, it's between the fourth and fifth rib, so the fourth intercostal space, and it's the V1 goes on the right side of the sternum, V2 goes on the left side of the sternum, and those are both in the fourth intercostal space. Skip V3 for a second. V4 goes in the fifth intercostal space, and it's usually in the midclavicular line. Then we can go back to V3. V3, you just simply put it in between V2 and V4. Now let's skip V5. Go to V6. It is in the fifth intercostal space, and it's in the mid-axillary line. And so you get that, and then we can go back to V5 and just put it right in between V4 and V6. Okay, I saved lead grouping for last, uh, mostly because it makes sense at the end, and also because there's some disagreement between different sources. So the lead grouping, we can all agree that lead 2, 3, and AVF are inferior leads. And so when we look at these on the EKG, these are the inferior leads. And we can all agree that lead 1 and lead AVL, lead 5 and V5 and V6, these are all lateral on the body, and so we call these the lateral leads. Now several sources, including uh, Dr. Eric Strong, who I love, call V1 and V2 septal. And then some other sources will call V1, V2, V3, and V4 anterior septal. I point this out because I'm primarily following the Dubbins textbook in, as an outline. And Dubbins textbook actually says that V3 and V4 are the septal leads whereas V1 and V2 are the right chest leads and their purpose would be looking at the right side of the heart. And then of course nobody disagrees that AVR is all up all by itself. And so it doesn't have a special name, it's just called AVR, making it simple. The reason these groupings are important is because you have a specific problem in one, uh, if you have a problem in one specific area of the heart, like a, an MI in one specific area, like if you have a a septal uh, MI, then you can you need to know which leads to look at to best see that. Anyhow, here's Dubbin's classification. He calls V1 and V2 right chest leads, V3 and V4 as septal chest leads, V5 and V6 as left chest leads, which would go with the AVL and 1 as left lateral chest leads. Then 2, AVF, and 3 are inferior, and everybody agrees on that. Lastly, I want to point out that um, Dubbins, he, he makes mention that you can have modified leads for different things. So somebody, you don't want them to trip on a treadmill. You don't want to put a lead on their leg. You can put it on their lower abdomen. And so there are modified leads and stuff for different uh, clinical settings.